Good morning, everybody. Welcome to E Thursday. I see some of you are waiting. Jennifer Repanis, it's always good to see your name there. Um, greetings to you. <laughs> Desi Dahlberg, listening from Jim in Sweden. How amazing is that? Don't you love technology today that um, you can be anywhere, anywhere in the world doing anything and you can still keep up with us here online. It's amazing. So Desi, <clears throat> sorry, you keep doing your thing there in the gym on behalf of all of us. Uh, Rory and myself get up early in the morning and we go for a, a very brisk walk. It's about half an hour. And um, then I come home and I do my, I try and keep active. But Rory's the one who wakes me up early in the morning and we get our day started by working out together. So, um, Ilana Jokobison, welcome to you. It was so good to see you last night. Christopher Doran is watching. Welcome to you. And Janine van Skalkveik, always great to see your beautiful face there in your profile picture. Uh, Colleen Swartz, welcome to you. Yeah, to my the dance that I'm doing on the inside when I see you all appear. Um, when I, not, I don't see you appear, I see your names appear on my phone here. So let's get into this morning. I will greet people later as they join in. But... Um, Daisy Dahlberger, often listening from Joan walking or whatever I'm doing. That's so good. Just keep active out there. Um, Mavis Blanty, welcome to you. Mavis, thank you so much for all your lovely comments that you put up on, on these online things and things that I post. And I really appreciate your comments. And so, okay, let's get into it. Today I said I'm speaking to you about our weapons. So, so let's pray first. And then I'll get into it. So, Lord, I thank you for your people. I thank you, Father, for your faithfulness to, to um, complete the work that you began in us. And I thank you, Father, that you're equipping us by your spirit to be overcomers in this time and to, to walk in our purpose. And that you have a purpose for each and every one of us. And that you are good and kind and you're full of grace abounding in goodness and truth that is who you are so we just say we love you today and we thank you for the privilege of using technology that we can all connect from wherever we live and whatever we're doing at the same time even though there are different time zones involved we are all connected because we're all part of the kingdom and so we thank you for what you are going to do this morning that you're going to impart faith in jesus name i saw uh, mona smith welcome to you so Let's get going. We're looking at our weapons today, and it's not the usual. I'm not, uh, you know, Ephesians 6 says, put on the armor of God. You know, it says, but our, our warfare is not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, I think I read that wrong. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, okay? I'm not looking at that today. We are looking at some other things um, that are very important that sometimes we don't realize that these are actually weapons that we have. When we live as believers in the kingdom, God has given us everything we need. And so some of them you will know, and some of them you might not know. So we're just going to go over it today. I know a lot of people are going through difficult circumstances. A lot of people have been, and they're already on the other side of it. But... Um, what I feel God has been saying to me lately is that uh, I, I already said, spoke to you and I said the best is still to come. And the devil wants us to give up, be overwhelmed, and um, just be silent and, and stop trusting that God has got even better for us. And so, Maria Boven, welcome to you. One of the regulars all the way from Sweden. Welcome, Maria. So, um, there, there's a, a generation that's arising on the scene in this season. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, how long you've served God or, or how little you've served God. It doesn't matter how much money you have. 
All that matters is how much faith you have in the faithfulness of God um, to be an overcomer in the season. And you know what it's like in the political arena is that we, for in any nation, we see someone who's either the president or the prime minister or whatever they call them in a nation, and we get to know that nation because of the, the head of state. That's what they are. And then suddenly there's a new, uh, they have time for elections come along, and suddenly the, the new people who emerge who we've never heard about, and they're running for president or prime minister. It's quite weird to me that this new person pops up and they've got all the stuff they need to fill that position as president or head of state. And so I feel that God has been preparing his people in the seasons that have gone by. Um, he's used the opportunities. He hasn't caused the suffering. You know, you know that that's what we, we don't believe God causes it. He doesn't put us in a trial to teach us something. But when we find ourselves going through difficult circumstances because life happens, then God uses the opportunity to bring out the best in us. And so there are some people who the best has been brought out now. And it's things that we don't realize these people have, but God does. And in the waiting, in the, in the, in the hiding place, God has developed these people to a, a point where now's the time for them to come out and they are going to have, I believe you are these people. We are these people. We're not looking for someone else. God has seen in you and I that for a long time we've been waiting and being faithful in the hiding place and nobody's applauded our, our times of prayer or listened to what we had to say. But the time is coming when we will, we will realize we have a voice. And we have an overcoming spirit. We have that courage and that boldness in us. And God's saying, now's the time to come out. So there are people who are looking for the authentic, especially when it comes to prophetic things. I believe the church is tired of the fluffy, um, you know, the weird, um, you know, the weird prophetic. Maybe none of you know about the weird prophetic that we knew from back in the 1980s. There were weird things happening. And they probably still are today. And, and people see the prophetic or the prophets and they think this man or this woman has the answer, the hotline to heaven. And they are going to be my solution. And God has got that out of us where we know that he is the solution. We hear from God and he is our answer and our solution. So we're not looking to man anymore. We need people. God put prophets in the church to equip us. But they are not our solution. We know that Jesus is. So when, when God's people begin to realize Jesus is the cornerstone of the church, he's the foundation of the church, and he's the head of the church, and we are the body, he's the body of Christ, the church. And it's all about him. And then we realize the people out there who don't know Jesus yet, or the believers who don't know about the prophetic and, and how to be overcome, overcomers, when they realize that it's all about Jesus, and um, that we need to move in, in power, not just in form. You know, in, we have a form of, of religion or tradition or whatever we do, but it's time to move in power. And so the devil hates the glory of God. The devil hates believers who believe we carry the glory and the power of God. The devil hates us because he knows we have a mandate to take the kingdom wherever we go and the glory of God will be revealed to his church. The best is still coming. And so today when we look at the weapons, I'm coming from that point of view, is that you already have these things that we're going to look at and you need to see that they're not just things that make you feel good or give you strength for an hour and that's it. They are powerful weapons that we need to apply every day, every minute of the day in our thinking, in how we operate, and when the devil comes at, or people come and we, we have an opportunity to be offended because they don't want to listen to what we have to say or, or we feel rejected and all those things that the devil brings our way or our own flesh uh, rises up and we, we turn to these things instead to be overcomers. So let's get to the first one. The first one obviously is the Word of God. The Word of God is the most powerful weapon we have. Jesus came as the living Word. He sent His Word and healed them. Um, Jesus 
is, is the word of God. The word became flesh and the word dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. So the word of God, the scriptures that we have should be our most precious possession. Whether they're a revelation to you or not, just the fact that we have these Bibles, the scriptures, the, the word that was in, breathed, inspired by the Spirit of God, it says men were born by the Spirit of God, picked up and carried along and inspired to write these scriptures, the prophetic scriptures in the Bible that tell us about our future and they tell us about the future of the church and God's plan for the church. And every answer to every question we may have can be found in the Word of God. A lot of people place the emphasis on the spoken Word of God, the prophetic words that you get. It is good, you know, that I've taught you what do you do with the prophecy. We need to be prophesying because that's how God connects us with His heart. Prophecy is important, but the best prophecy you can get is the Word of God, the written Word of God that becomes a revelation to you, which then becomes the rhema Word of God. The, the written Word is the Logos. You know, when you read your Bible, it's the Logos Word of God. But when the Holy Spirit wants to reveal something to you and breathes on that scripture you've been reading for weeks and suddenly the lights are switched on it's become the rhema word of god this the spoken word of god the living word of god which becomes life to us so it's not good enough just to read your bible every day and to say okay i read one chapter of the old testament one chapter of the new because you're disciplined which is good we need discipline today um but we need to dig in. You only get revelation when you dig into the Word of God. So you read. You, you are disciplined. You're committed. You read the Scriptures. God is pleased because you're reading the Scriptures. You, you're feeding yourself. But if you want to take it a step further and for the Word to become your weapon, it requires you digging in, digging deep to get the, the jewels, the gems that are underground, that are the mysteries that are hidden in there. And when God, when we dig deep and we say, Holy Spirit, help me to understand what I'm reading. I don't just want to read the word as somebody else's story that happened. I want to take what I'm reading and apply it to my own life. And then we meditate on it and we think about it and we, we go to God. We say, God, please help me to understand this. The best times that I've had about the word of God is I read something in the word and then I know God is trying to speak to me out of this when I can't get it out of my mind. And um, I thought, example, the story of the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. And then there's Gideon in, in, in Judges chapter 6. Good morning from Sweden. We have Elizabeth Carlson Jones. Welcome to you. And Deirdre van der Walt said hello everyone. And there was somebody, Yvette van Rain, morning to you. And I'll catch the rest a little bit later. So... So I read these scriptures about Gideon and the angel of the Lord appeared to him. And then the, the Shunammite woman, Debbie Bell, welcome to you. Um, the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings 4. And I'm reading these stories. That, when you read them, there is, it's a story in the Bible that really happened. And I'm saying, God, I want to dig in and I want to find out what are you saying? How can I bring the story that happened back in centuries ago? And before Jesus even came to earth, there's something powerful that happened here. How can I bring it into my life and apply it to my life? And so the story of the Shunammite woman, <clears throat> what I do is I begin to actually picture, the, I, I move it from just something I'm reading on paper. Because you know what happens is sometimes you read the same thing over and over and you realize you got to the end of the page, you can't remember a thing you read. So I read, the, I read it over and over, and then I begin to imagine this thing happening. And so now, because I've done that so many times with the Shunammite woman, I see her standing in the doorway in my imagination. I see the prophet sitting on his chair saying, what can I do for you because you've been so kind to me? And then he gives her a prophecy. And God has given me so much revelation out of that because I went to him and I said, how can I bring it into my life today? So, so take that with what you're reading. Take the Word of God 
Maybe God has given you a scripture today. Take that one scripture and say, God, I'm going to dig in this thing. I'm going to chew on it all the time because that's what meditating is. We chew on it. We think about it. And, and we, you know, it's like a piece of clay that we play around with it all the time until it begins to form into what God needs it to be formed into in our spirit. And that's our revelation. That becomes a weapon. You, know, you can't just take the word of God and, 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 um, you know, you take the word of God and then you, you give it a try. No, it's got to become something formed in you. Uh, the, live, the word that's become alive, the living word. And God forms a picture in your, in your thought life. And you live by this word and you eat off this word. And that becomes your weapon. And then when the devil comes your way and you say, no, it is written. You know, Jesus, when he was tempted, he came out of the wilderness in the power of the spirit and he was tempted by the devil. Um, he was led into the wilderness. He was tempted by the devil. And every single temptation or whatever came his way, his reply was, it is written. And so we take our example from Jesus, how he overcame. And every time he said, it is written, the devil came up with another thing. And so the devil's going to try. But if your response is, I have a revelation so deep down in my spirit that God has spoken to me and I'm still, I might still be chewing on it. I might still be working it through with God, but this is what's written. And the devil cannot overcome you when you are a person who says it is written. Okay, so that's the word of God. The next weapon we have is called the testimony of deliverance. And we have a scripture here. I would like you to, if, you, if you're following me in your Bible, there's Ephesians chapter 1. Are we talking about the test? No, 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 not there yet. The testament, it's Revelation chapter 19, says this. We're going to go to Ephesians 1 just now. I'll go to Revelation 1, Revelation 12 first. Um, and it says there's a scripture in Revelation 12. Um, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Sounds like a big movie, a big screen movie. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon, I want to say something to you quickly, before, for, because I've just thought of this. Um, we often hear, back to the word of God as a weapon, we often hear that the Word of God comes to comfort us in our situation. You know, when you're going through something, um, you're feeling sorry for yourself, and then God speaks to you. You get a scripture or something happens. God speaks. And it does comfort us because God has spoken. But the Word of God is not always comfort food. You know what comfort food is? When you're feeling sorry for yourself and you want to sit on your couch under the blankets and you want to eat macaroni and cheese or chicken soup, if you like chicken soup, I don't. But, um, you know, the comfort food, nice big piece of chocolate cake. But when God speaks to us, it's not always comfort food. It does comfort us. But many times God speaks to us when we're feeling down or we're feeling low. And it's refueling food. It's because this, he wants us to get up from where we are. And we're comforted, yes, but it's food that strengthens us for where, for where we're going. Okay, Just remember that. So, we're not always looking for comfort food. God loves to comfort us. That's why he gave us edification, exhortation, and comfort, prophetic words. But I believe in this season, God is wanting to give us food, word that's going to refuel us and refire us and awaken us if we're falling asleep. Not literally, if we've become dull in hearing and, and the, the circumstances have become so difficult that we don't just need comfort now. We need this food, this alive food, you know, uh, live cultures in your yogurt that you eat. We need this live food, like a, a powerful probiotic in your spiritual gut that's going to get you up from where you are and fire you for the journey ahead. That's what God wants to do in the season. So, where were we? Testimony of deliverance. It says in Revelation 12, I'm going to go straight to verse, I'll read verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, 
and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Um, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you dwell in them. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. What is the word of our testimony? Who is Jesus to you? What has he done for you? What is he still doing in your life today? Is the word of your testimony. The power of God is the word of our testimony. The cross is the word of our testimony. The testimony is something that witnesses of what God has done. What Jesus has done for us. That's the testimony. Um, and the word of our testimony is, what are we saying about it? What are we declaring about it? What are we witnessing to, um, to others about what Jesus has done in our lives? That is the word of our testimony. And that is so powerful when it comes to using the word of testimony as a as word of deliverance as a weapon. And we find um, the story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. And remember... When David ran up to Saul and he said, send me, I'll go. Goliath was out there taunting the Israelites who were, who were trained men of war. And they were fearful because this giant would come out and stand there every morning and every evening and say the same thing. Intimidation was his key, um, was his weapon. And here David comes along and nobody had any faith in David, but David, the, Saul said to him, but, you know, and even his brothers tried to speak him out of it, saying, who do you think you are, you know, they were saying to him, you just called, you're supposed to be looking after our father's sheep, because all David did that day was obey an instruction of his father to take some food to his brothers who were out there in the army, so, so he went, taking food, thinking, this is my assignment for the day, and he found himself amidst a, an, a fearful army because of a giant of, from the Philistines who was intimidating them. So David went to Goliath, uh, to Goliath, to Saul, and he said, I'll go. And remember the story, Saul said, wear my armor, and David said he couldn't wear his armor. But what this is what David said to Saul. It's in 1 Samuel 17, 34 onwards. It says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the land of this Philistine, from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. So David, in all his times of being prepared, remember I said to you, the people who've been, who've been almost invisible, they're, they're being prepared in the hiding place. And we think that, they don't have anything to offer because they just seem to be going through a hard time all the time. But God has been preparing them and developing them. And these people are going to come out. You and I are going to come out with some testimonies of the deliverance of God, which will not just be, you know, sometimes we go to a meeting and we have a testimony time and people get up and they say, I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ because he saved me. And, and those, that's amazing. But we're going to come up with testimonies of, you know, we, I had no food. I needed provision. And you know what? God delivered us. God miraculously provided for us. You know what? The doctor said that there was no cure for whatever disease I had. But you know what? God, God healed me. There's a miracle here. So people who've been hidden away in all the what looks like struggle and just trying to survive, when, when, the, when the, the time comes and, and these people are revealed because God is bringing us out, we're going to come up with testimonies that will not just be, oh, that's amazing, that's nice, and then we forget about it. They're going to be powerful because they're going to defeat the enemy. They're going to defeat the plans of the enemy. It's like this big giant is standing in front of the church saying, you're not going to amount to anything. You're not relevant in this day and age. Look at, you know, look what happened with so-and-so, and they'll remind us of all the 
the mistakes and, 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 you know, people who fell and all kinds of things that happened. And we will come out and say, but it is written, and this is what God did for me. And this sets the enemy on the back foot. It actually sets the enemy fleeing. The word of our testimony is a powerful weapon. Um, Revelation 19.10 says this. Um, Revelation 19.10, and you, I'm sure you all know this one. It says, yeah, and I fell at his feet, and this is John in heaven, and an, and, and an angel appears to him, and he says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus. Who is Jesus Christ? What did he do for you and I that brought us into this right standing with, with the Father in heaven, who has given us authority to be overcomers, to make declarations, to go out there and represent the kingdom. This is our testimony of who Jesus is. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, the purpose of God speaking to his people. The purpose of you and I making any declaration is to testify of who Jesus is and what he has done for us and what he is still going to do. So the power of your testimony, the next time you have an opportunity to share something that God has done for you or something that's still in process because you believe God sees the end of it and he has a good end, uh, a purpose in mind. Jeremiah 29, 11, God has good plans for us to give us a future and a hope. So the next time you, you have an opportunity to share a testimony, remember how powerful it is. You're declaring something into the spiritual realm. Don't undermine or underestimate the testimonies that you have. Maybe this, you think they're small ones, but any testimony declared is a ripple in the spiritual realm that shakes the kingdom of darkness because when we speak of our testimonies, when we speak of the goodness of God, he gets the glory. And I said to you, the devil hates the glory of God. So, the testimony of deliverance. The next weapon we're going to look at is called the presence of God. The presence of God is so powerful. We know that there's scriptures in the Bible that says the, pre the hills melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. Um, the atmosphere changes when, when God's presence, you know, you've been in a meeting and, and suddenly there's this tangible presence of God. The devil, the kingdom of darkness, and God himself cannot be in the same place. The glory of God and the darkness of the enemy cannot stay in the same place. So let's have a look at Ephesians 1 now. Now we can look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, the presence of God. Uh, and, and you know, God is with us all the time. He promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 says this. I read verse 15. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And this is what Paul prays. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Revelation in the knowledge of who God is. The spirit of wisdom to understand who this King of Kings is, the Lord of Lords, who Jesus is. And we begin to get an understanding and we, be, we begin to see him. Um, when, when you see him, you know, there's a thing in... Um, in the animal kingdom, that when an animal is born, I'm not sure if it's every animal, I'm sure it is, but they call it imprinting. Maybe some of you know more than I do about this. But when an animal is born, the first um, thing that that newborn animal sees is imprinted in its vision, and this is who I belong to. It's the same with you and I as believers in, in Jesus. When we have a picture of who he is, you know, Isaiah, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Then you read all these people who saw the Lord in his temple. The book of Revelation, this picture that John has of the throne of God and the colors around the throne and the sea of glass and, and his eyes like fire. When we have a spiritual revelation, I'm not saying you have to see God, 
but um, a revelation of who God is, it becomes imprinted in your spirit, and the, it cannot be taken away. You know, sometimes you say, we say, I saw this, and it can't be unseen. You know, don't show me that thing, because I can't unsee it. Once I've seen something, I've seen it. And so I know that there, there's a movie that I saw um, many, many years ago. It may have been as long as 35 years ago. And I saw a terrible scene in a movie of how somebody was murdered. And now I can watch movies. I don't have a problem with that because I know it's a movie. But this one particular scene was horrible. I, I won't tell you what it was because I don't want you to have that picture. And... To this day, when I see the name of that movie, if it ever comes up, I, I blotted it out of my mind. I can't even remember the name now. Um, I won't watch that movie because I know that scene's going to come back on. Now, if it works that way with horrible things, when we get a picture of who God is, it cannot be taken away from us. We have this picture of the presence of God. When he steps into a room, what is going to happen? Just go and read Revelation and, and you see the picture that John saw. And then there's the uh, Jesus appearing on a white horse. And his eyes, he had a sword coming out of his mouth and his eyes like a flame of fire. These things are written in the Bible to help us have a picture of God in heaven. You know, all these stories that people have when they die and they go to heaven. And they describe what, what heaven looks like. And the grass is green and the streets are gold. And, and you know what all of these things are we told these things so that we can have this imprinted in our spirit and we have a picture of where we're going but not only that who we have with us every all the time every day we design to live in the atmosphere of the kingdom of god not in the atmosphere of darkness so um let me read something to you um um, 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 here's a, this is what happens. This is how it is used as a weapon. The, pre, the presence of God becomes an automatic weapon whether we use it or not because you know you're anointed and you are set apart and the anointing already repels the enemy. And we don't understand this. When we're going through a hard time, oh, it's just terrible. I just feel so low and so down. And then we forget God's anointed us. God set us apart. We don't belong in that place of darkness and being a victim, and, and we have victory in our DNA as believers. Listen to this, Deuteronomy 20 from verse 1 to 4 says this, When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. Why? For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. So where did God bring you from? today as you're watching it what has he brought you through he's parted the red sea for you he has done miraculous things for you he's brought you this far and so he's saying to you today remember what i've done for you go back to the testimony what has god done for you keep the testimony in your mouth um for the lord your god is with you who brought you up from the land of egypt so it shall be when you are on the verge of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. Now remember, the priest was very important in these days, in the Old Testament days, because the priest was the one who came and spoke a word of blessing over the people, empowering them to do what they were called to do. Today, we don't need a priest to suddenly appear. Some churches believe that the priest, they call them the priest, has to come to your house and speak a blessing over you for your birthday or whatever it may be. The priest has to come and pray for you. You have to go to the priest for advice. We have the Spirit of God. We are priests, prophets and priests ourselves, but also we have Jesus, the high priest. So, and then, and this, this is what the priest had to say to the people. He shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. It sounds like, you know, the movie Braveheart, when Mel Gibson rode up on his horse with all his stuff on his face and they were all wearing their, they were going out to battle and he gave them a, a, the biggest pep talk of every movie we have ever seen. And he said, we're going to do this for freedom. You know, this, can you just imagine the priest doing this? This is why we're doing this. It's for freedom. So, 
Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. And this is why, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. This was Old Testament. How much more powerful is it today when we have the Spirit of God? We are, we are anointed. We called for such a time as this. We have authority in Christ. We have all the weapons of our warfare. We have the armor of God. And here the enemy comes against us with one lie, because that's all he can use. One lie, and we give up. And th this is Old Testament stuff. Go and read Deuteronomy 28, 20 from verse 1 to 4. And Deuteronomy 28 verse 10 is even better. It says this, Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. How powerful is that? Now, we don't want people to be afraid of us, unless they really have to. But um, we, this is, we're talking about the spiritual realm of darkness here. We are called by the name of the Lord. You know, um, it says, when the Spirit of the Lord, will, uh, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Um, I think that's Isaiah 59 or Isaiah 54. I always get that, uh, that one wrong because that's not in my notes now. But... When God lifts up a standard above his people, the enemy comes in. The standard that gets raised up is the flag, um, the banner above. That's what a standard is. When the, when the armies went out to war, the, there would be someone ahead of them who would be carrying a standard. And it's actually a flag that identifies who this army represents. And so when the enemy comes against us, the, the standard is there saying, these are my people. They will be my people and I will be their God. These are promises. And so is that Isaiah 59, 19? Thank you, Rodine. And so the standard is already above you. My beloved is here, is mine, and I am his, and his banner over me is love. You know, powerful love is. But the love of God for you and I is a weapon that we, we walk it's like an automatic weapon. We just go. God is with us. And the enemy knows that, but still he tries. So I'll read you another scripture when it comes to the presence of God as a weapon. I've got to watch my time. Um, here's another scripture to you. And it is Psalm 73, verses 24 to 26. This is what it says. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God, but God, is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Make God the strength of your heart. When you're feeling down, sorry, mm. when you're feeling that as if you want to give up, you can't feel the presence of God, and the presence of God is not something we have to feel because before we say that God is here. We have promises that tell us God is with us. So, um, so that's your weapon. Why do you think um, when God said to Joshua, um, the Lord, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Because he understood that Joshua needed to know that he was with him. So God is with you today. Next one. Uh, and we are almost done. Um, the next one we're looking at, I think, is the peace of God. Uh, yes, the peace of God, important weapon of, that we have, the peace of God. Not just that everything go, is going well, so we have peace. It's a supernatural, empowering grace and favor and love of God that causes us to know the peace of God is there. We're surrounded by the peace of God. So the peace of God is the shalom of God. And we find that in number six. Uh, um, you know, may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And da, da, da. Uh, maybe I'll read it to you instead of just going da da da. Um, because maybe you don't know what number six is. But it's just that I've spoken about it so often that I just presume that you know number six, but let's do it properly. Numbers chapter six uh, was the blessing that they were told. The priests had to speak this blessing over God's people. And this is it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you or show you favor. 
The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name on the children, children of Israel, and I will bless them. When he says, and give you peace, it's not just, oh, I'm peaceful. Now I can have a nice afternoon nap because everything is peaceful. It's the power of God. The peace of God, the shalom of God is the covenant that he made with you and I. He brought us into peace through Christ. And so the peace of God is restoration, wholeness, healing, welfare, nothing missing, nothing broken. All of those things are in the, in the, that belong to us in the peace of God. And it's God's will that we walk in an understanding that we have these things. The peace of God, the supernatural peace of God becomes a weapon for us. Jesus said, um, uh, let me find the scripture. I think it is, um, uh, I'm just trying to find my scripture here. Oh, I'm going to read you something else now. Um, I think it's John 14 where Jesus said, In peace I leave with you. Um, and it was just before he was going to leave. Um, John 14. It's actually John 14 verse 27. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. You know, the world can't give you peace that, that's lasting. Um, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Jesus, this was just before he was trying to tell them that he was about to, to leave. And he said, this is what I'm going to leave with you, peace. So Jesus knew how important it was going to be for his disciples that they had his peace, not the world's peace. It was his parting gift to them. And so if Jesus realized how important it was for them to have supernatural peace, because he knew what was coming, supernatural peace, we need to have that today. We need to say, God, I thank you. I thank you that in Christ I have that peace, not the world's kind of peace that lasts for two hours, if you're lucky. Um, it's it's an, uh, an eternal thing. It's a powerful weapon that I have, and it's called peace. There's a uh, Colossians 3 verse 15. Let me read this to you. Colossians 3 verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. And then it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, whatever. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. That's what we, that's our um, responsibility, to let the peace of God rule in our hearts, to dwell in us. And so we choose. Am I going to let the peace of God rule? And you know what rule means? To govern in your heart. So it's emo how your emotions are leading you. Or is it the peace of God? You have to you choose. You choose. It doesn't automatically happen that because God said, "My peace I give to you," or Jesus said, "My peace I leave with you." Here's a gift. It's a parting gift. I want you to have it so you'll remember me and you'll be empowered um, to live this overcoming life. We choose. Am I going to let peace rule my heart today? Or am I going to let my circumstances rule my heart today? And we choose by faith. We say, God, I thank you for peace. I thank you for that supernatural empowerment that comes. Because you said, I have peace. And it's the shalom kind of peace. It's, it's an eternal kind of peace that we have in Christ. And here's the last one. Um, the la oh, Actually, no, I've got a few here. But I'm just going to... The, the, one of the important weapons that we have is called agreement with others. And um, agree, the agreement of others, when we're going through something, it's not the best thing just to try and get through on your own. Um, I fortunately have a partner here, right here in my home. And I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. Of course, we turn to God. We, we choose to go to God with all our troubles first. And we hear from Him and we get comfort from Him and we get that refueling food from Him and He gives us peace and we share our testimonies and whatever else it is, but to have someone here on the planet who will be able to agree with you that you overcome, that you get through what you're going through. 
There's a scripture in Matthew 18 verse 19 that says, If two of you agree on earth, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. There's this agreement that we have to come to. But the problem is, you have to find, if, if agreement is going to be a weapon, if you need to overcome in some area, and you, uh, you're going to say, I have a weapon here, and it's called agreement. You first have to make sure that the person you're getting to pray with you is on the same spiritual wavelength as you are, and they're not the people who say, who's thinking in their minds, oh, maybe she deserves to go through what she's going through because... I can hear all this rubbish coming out of her mouth and I can see what she's doing wrong. You know, you need somebody who's saying, yes, I hear what you're going through. Um, I'm going to agree with you and we're going to trust that God will speak to us and, and confirm by the two of us praying together. And so you walk a road and you're both praying the same thing. You're both saying the same thing and you both believe that God wants to do something better for you than what you're doing, seeing now. Um, the biggest agreement that we can come into is when we agree with God, when we agree with the scriptures and we don't question them. We say, um, you know, he sent his word and healed them, but look at what happened to sister so-and-so. Or he sent his word and healed them. Or um, he provides for the birds. You know, your God is, is a provider. All those provision scriptures. And you say, yeah, but look, I don't earn enough money at the end of the month. Then you're just nullifying your faith. So you you first agree with the scriptures, no no doubt. You say, God, um, speak to me from your word. Give me something I can agree with you about. And then we agree with God. And then we find somebody else who will agree with us about what God has said to us. They're not going to you know, dilute your faith by speaking against what you believe God has told you. That's so important. Now, here's the last thing I'm going to give you because it's quarter past 10. And it is called... Living from the inside out, um, if you're looking for a weapon or some way to overcome, we have to, and this I'm looking at in my book, The Beautiful Warrior, and I wrote this book, um, I wrote this book in 2019, and it was first intended to be a, a course for people to live as warriors. I said that I was going to, I saw something in here just now. Um, and I don't know where it is, but I'll share it with you very quickly, the, um, about the presence of God. Um, I dreamt back here in 2017 that I was standing on a battlefield. Some of you have heard me share this already, but I'll share it now because it just seems to fit in so well with our weapons. Um, I was standing on a battlefield, all ready for battle, and the army was on the other side. I shared this not so, not too long ago. And I looked down the row, uh, the battle line that I was standing in, and everybody was dressed for a battle, covered in armor. You know, the old-style armor thing. And we, we all had weapons in our hands. And the enemy was on the other side, quite far off, but we could hear the taunting that was coming from them. And we could hear them sort of, clinking their armor and whatever they were doing. And then I sensed fear in, in the battle line that I was standing in. And then I heard, coming from way back, I heard the sound of what sounded like thousands and thousands of chariot wheels. And I looked back and I saw the dust clouds that had been formed by these chariot wheels. And first I thought, if these guys are coming from the enemy's camp, they're going to come and they're just going to take us out. Because we're all standing in a long line facing the army and they're coming from behind us. And then, as I thought that, I heard God say, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. And I knew this was the help that God was sending to His people. The scriptures in Zechariah. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. And I felt God was saying, back in 2017, God is going to remind us that it's by the power of His Spirit that His church will overcome. So that was just a bonus. For you. So let's look at uh, living from the inside out. And I'll end with this. If you need to overcome or you're needing a weapon, we don't live from outside. In other words, what do our circumstances tell us is happening or not happening? What do we see? What do we feel? That's living from the outside in. And we allow the outside to influence our faith. But we are meant as believers to live from the inside out. What's going on on the inside? What has God deposited in us? And, and who are we that we live from this 
inward place in God. That's where our power is when we live in Christ. So 3 John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So God wants us to prosper on the inside. He wants us to advance on the inside, to grow, to be strengthened on the inside, to have faith. And he's not looking for the outward signs of this. He first wants our soul to prosper so that we can prosper in all things after our soul has prospered and be in health. If you don't know who you are in Jesus, the enemy will always be telling you who you once were. Prospering in soul is knowing your inheritance in Jesus and growing in the knowledge of what you have been given. Remember, I said that I wrote this book, The Beautiful Warrior, and it was intended to be a course for people um, who needed to find the warrior that God had called them to be in themselves. The warrior that we've been called to be, this um, we, we're part of the army of God. We're part of uh, the kingdom and that the will not be shaken. And in this book, I've got some, some chapters that are designed to get people to rise up and, and live as warriors, carrying and portraying the goodness of God. So I say here, knowing your inheritance, okay, your soul will prosper as you learn to put your trust in his word and his character circumstances and feelings are not the source of our problems. Our problems and how we handle them always begin in our thinking. We need to be guarding our thought life and our hearts. We are surrounded by so much negativity and despair, but when we go to the Word of God for help, we find strength. Remember the Word of God is your first weapon. You can't have a healthy soul and thought life by living off the things you read in the latest U magazine or keeping up to date with soap operas. <laughs> That's living in denial, forgetting that your problems exist because someone else's problems are worse than yours, so you watch it in a soap opera. Those things aren't wrong, but if you want to be confident in your spiritual identity, make sure to remind yourself by reading the scriptures too. Matthew 12:34. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What is in your heart will come out of your mouth. Prosperity begins when you believe that you belong to him and your identity has been renewed and redefined in Jesus. Proverbs 23 verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So I want to say to you after reading all of that, um, your identity, an understanding of your identity is going to be a great weapon in your arsenal of weapons. Understanding your identity. Yeah, Jennifer Rippon, it's the U magazine will give you a lot of rubbish information, but the Word of God will give you revelation. Um, I must say every now and again, my mother collects the U magazines and I go and I get a pile and when I'm feeling like I want to read empty-minded, non-thinking, things I get the U magazine um, just also I want to see if, if I know anyone famous in the U magazine I have come across some famous people I know before in the U magazine um, so let me let me read this being told who you are and how you are is not good enough when you know your identity in Christ you need to learn how to be that it's good you know we can hear these these prophecies because prophecy will always speak to who you are in, in Christ but if we don't learn how to be who God said we are going to be, we won't pick up that weapon and say, but I am a daughter or a son of God. I'm called as a prophet, king, and priest. Doesn't mean you're a prophet, fivefold ministry prophet, but we are kings and priests. Book of Revelation will tell us that. We have authority in Christ. We have the authority to, to declare the word of God that God has given us as a revelation. We have authority to pick up the sword of the Spirit and say to the devil, it is written. And so unless we learn to be who God has called us to be, we're going to think about it and we're going to say, oh, I feel differently. I don't feel like God can use me or call me. And we have to find these things. So remember your weapons, the word of God, the testimony of your deliverance, the testimony so powerful, the presence of God, the peace of God, 
and finding agreement with others. And then I've added to that your identity in Christ. You are more powerful than you think you are, not because of Jesus, because of what he has done. The, the blood that was shed for you, his body that was broken for you. And the devil will try everything to get you to deny that, to, to always feel as if you have nothing. You know, some people pray and they don't even think God hears their prayers because the devil has worn them down so much that they don't even believe they have authority when they pray. Um, never mind praying for people to be healed. The Bible tells us Jesus gave us a commission. You will... I've given you authority to go out there and cure diseases. We don't have to study to be doctors. We have to walk in the authority we have. And so I'm going to obey that commission that I have as a believer. We have authority to represent the kingdom. And when you have authority, you have all of heaven's backing to do what God has called you to do. So be encouraged with that today. Um, I'm going to let you go. It is now 10.25. Be be that powerful warrior God has called you to be and trust that when God says he's with you that he is with you and wherever you go today just expect to see things move and change expect that food to come not just to comfort you remember we don't want macaroni and cheese scriptures we want refueling you know like a an energy bar and some spiritual steroids so that we can go out there today and make a difference. Or if all you're going to do is stay at home, make a difference where you live by adding some fuel to your prayers and saying, God, I believe you hear me. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for revelation. I know who I am in Christ, and I'm going to make a difference today. So you be encouraged today, and I will see you next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Tomorrow there's a bite-sized video coming. So I think it's the presence of God or God is with you or something. And I, there's probably a little repeat of something I said today. Um, but enjoy that tomorrow. And then I will see you soon again. Thank you so much for joining in. I see there were, um, let me just greet a few people. Jennifer Repanis, the end of the session always comes too soon. Oh, I love it. I love it. I could sit here for two hours, maybe longer and just carry on. Um, so, yep, Elizabeth Carlson Jones, blessings to you too. Uh, I see Elana Stoll here. Desi Dahlberg, I hope you've developed some more muscle there while you were listening to me. Um, Janine von Skullkweg, putting this in my book wish list. I have to order some more. I have to be honest with you. I only have two copies here, but I, I have the feeling that I have to order some more because God told me to get it out again yesterday. And then I'm thinking of putting together some kind of seminar around this. It's called The Beautiful Warrior. And when I wrote it, before the book was, no, the book had just been published and I was invited to do a ladies weekend at a, a camp. And I took some chapters out of here and the whole weekend was designed around um, this. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you something right here that was given to each lady at the camp. Uh, Some of you have seen this before. Each lady got five arrows because we spoke about the five arrows. And each lady went home with a little, you know, little parcel with the arrows in it. And mine I keep up on my desk here to remind me. And so I love doing that. And so I'm thinking of doing it again, um, maybe over a Saturday and taking a couple of sessions and taking a couple of chapters and just equipping people to be the warriors we call to be. So I will greet the rest of you. I see Lefuna is here, Dolly Janssen from Furen, good to see you. And there was some Michelle Cravenstein, good to see you. Rodene, I saw Debbie Ernston, if you saw here. Um, and some more. Eleanor Gallant, good to see you if you're still here. Monica Day. Um, yep, and quite a few people joined in afterwards. So thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you soon again. I love you all. I appreciate you all. Bye. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining today's session. I hope you were equipped, empowered, and encouraged today by what you heard. Remember, you can find all the live video sessions that you may have missed on this page, on the Facebook page, Kathy Mole Ministries, or on YouTube, Kathy Mole on YouTube. You can also find all the other resources on kathymole.com. Thank you.